All right, we got a fresh cup of coffee and it's kind of dreary outside today, rainy, cold, about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. We're in zone four, Northern Great Plains. Great day to dream about flowering annuals. And that's what we're gonna look at today is mostly annuals in containers. And I kind of look at annuals as being the, well, I don't know, icing on the cake. I love trees and shrubs, perennials, but the flowering annuals bring so much more of a, well, a shock or a wow or a contrast into the landscape. It's just something we love doing. Now this video ties in with a couple videos we did about a year and a half ago. One of them was just a photo collage with a little music. Gonna show you close up on a lot of the flowers we're looking at. And then we'll also take a look at a couple pots that my wife and I potted up. Kind of shows you the process when we get to that. And mostly though, as I said, we're gonna talk about container grown annuals. If you like to shop for flowering annuals at your local garden center or where you buy your blooming plants, they can run out quickly in the spring mid-April, getting into that first part of May, you may or may not find that same annual even two weeks later by mid-May. So what my wife and I do, we have these benches that you see here. We can roll those in and out of our garage. Not only does that allow us to buy the plants early, we can roll it outside during the day to get the sun, put it back in the garage at night because we can still see a lot of freezing temperatures all the way up to mid-May. I've heard many stories over the years where people put those annuals in a dark garage I'm telling you, even two to three days later, that annual is probably gonna be suffering or in decline and may not come out of it. We purchased these tables from a company, Farm Tech. I'll put some information in description if you like the idea of that. They were around 400 bucks about five years ago. Okay, this is what we use for a lot of our potting and especially the smaller pots. I've got these trash barrels and we can actually put different soils in there, whether it be a peat moss base, vermiculite, perlite, uh, even fertilizer if you wanted to store that in there. And then it becomes something that can be taken apart. That's just a side rail that collapses. That's a four by eight sheet of plywood cut in half. And then if you don't have amendments in there, those bins could just be stacked up out of the way. So that works great for small pots. All the other bigger pots, we pretty much will put those on the ground and work from them that way. Once the process is complete where the containers are full, this is a south facing garage. And what we do, we just leave them kind of towards the end if we've still got unfavorable weather, we'll just open up the garage door during the afternoon and then close it again at night. And that can happen sometimes for two weeks, three weeks, uh, typically not longer than a month. And it also gives these plants a chance to kind of harden off or get rooted in, get settled in their container before we put them out in the elements. First one we're going to look at then is this pot right here. This is a petunia, mizu, diamond frost is a nice accent. That's a variegated Dracaena or spike as they're called, but you're gonna see how quickly something like this can just be overtaken by just a couple of the plants. And one of the things we do since we're in the Northern climate, we've got a short growing season for annuals, three to four months at the most. We pack them full because we want it to look full for most of the season. So they're overplanted. but what can happen as you see here, those petunias, they can easily just overtake the rest of the group and that's what's happened there. Take a look at that setting though and how much that color draws your eye in. I actually put this planter in the center of this flagstone area. I, just, I mounded up this area, planted some perennial sedums. I just like the way it looks and it forces us to change our walking pattern. I'm a big advocate of curves in the landscape. One other season, this is the same ceramic pot you can see here, we use coleus. Now coleus has some of the most showy leaf colors out there. You can buy so many different varieties, but they can overpower a container. You can see this one, yeah, a little bit lopsided. That coleus loves the heat, it just took off. A dahlia, that's a coleus that's flowering. So what I suggest oftentimes with coleus, you can either have two or three pots and just plant those coleus individually in those separate pots. We also put coleus out in the landscape on different beds because they're such a fast grower, really, really bright color that draws the eye. This happens to be actually celosia or coxcomb. That's another different type of annual. But the coleus, they'll take full sun. They'll grow in a shaded environment also, and they'll actually take it pretty darn dry. One more picture there, a close up of that coleus, the different leaf variations that you can get. Now this is the video where my wife and I put together a couple of our annual containers in our front porch area. Pretty short video if you want to watch it. It'll be in the description. Some different white marigolds. Normally marigolds are in the orange um, or a brighter yellow, but this is kind of a white marigold. Gets taller, did pretty good in there. I love marigolds. It's not my wife's favorite. 
So she throws some marigolds in, a couple of our smaller pots on uh, this bistro table here. I think it adds that splash of color. Marigolds happen to work great uh, in garden vegetable areas. People use them as a natural pest deterrent. And that brings up the point of deadheading. Deadheading is something you're probably going to have to do weekly if you want to keep your annual beds and pots looking good. Just keep pinching off those dead flowers. That'll encourage new blooms to come and just keep it looking fresh. But I love that dark red petunia there. I think it's a nice contrast. Nice variation in the petals there. In that same video, here's a couple more pots that my wife and I put together here. We've switched over to a, just a dark red dracaena or spike as they're called. And this is actually a false cypress. Sometimes we'll try to we'll put different shrubs in planters if they've got nice yellow color or something interesting or unique just to change it up a little bit. Now this is something that wasn't shown in the video is how did they turn out later in the season. And you can see again we've got certain areas where they're getting a little bit congested. I happen to like it. It doesn't bother me a bit when it's like almost over full but we've got some of that coleus you know holding its own in the back. Sweet potato vine. Great vigorous heat loving vine that will oftentimes drape down. It looks like uh, we have million bells or calibrachoa, a couple different petunia covers and then another dark sweet potato vine there. Yeah so the sweet potato vine great accent plant to get that yellow or that burgundy if that's what you're looking for. And here again on that topic of using shrubs I believe this was a sun-kissed arborvitae. Now the root system that's in that pot from that shrub. It's not going to survive the winter. That won't be hardy enough. So that's something you can try and just transplant it out. Plant it out in the fall when the freezing temperatures come. See if you can get it to live. I've had 50-50 results when I've done this, but definitely worth a try. On that same note, this happens to be a golden elder, which I thought has a very unique branching habit, a great accent, especially when you contrast it with that purple sweet potato vine. Here's another elderberry, black lace elderberry. This is planted in the ground. I think this would make a really cool statement piece in a larger container. Fast growers, so they really take off and would fill out that container quickly. This was at a different location, but this is probably castor bean. Again, a really fast grower. But look at just the dramatic difference by using different types of annuals in these different pots, a blue salvia, a Swedish ivy. They've got some coleus there, New Guinea impatience. That's likely lantana over there, another great blooming plant that just lasts throughout the season. And that's the great thing about annuals compared to perennials. Annuals are probably going to have bloom just constant through most of the season. Not all of them, whereas perennials have a window. Maybe it's two weeks, three weeks, or even four weeks on some perennial groups. But then they're done. You're going to have an early, mid, and late season on the perennial blooming. And I bring this photo back one more time to show you different hanging baskets. That's likely petunia mixed in with million bells or calibrachoa. And you can buy hanging baskets, I think in most regions throughout the country, uh, ready to go and you just hang them up. But there's also, we like to kind of craft and make our own hanging baskets. This happens to be a cocoa moss liner. And the cocoa moss liners, I think they add an extra natural touch to an area. The birds, as these start breaking down, happen to love these for making nests, so you're helping them out as well. This happens to be some zonal geranium, some petunia, and then the vinca vine, which this can grow upwards of six, even eight feet in a season. I've had that vine hit the ground, root in, and actually overwinter too. All right, back into the garage, and you don't have to look at that ugly pot there. We got to get that cleaned up. We're going to talk a little bit more about that cocoa moss. This happens to be on a huge hanger. That thing probably weighs about 40 pounds by the time we're done with it. But there it is. We kind of introduce it into the landscaping where I grow some different container shrubs. So a lot of cool different plants in here. Here again, that diamond frost. We've got some different petunias in there, that purplish a heliotrope, kind of a cool color. Yeah, so there again, we just add just a, something interesting, something blooming within our trees and shrubs. And back to the gross blue pot that we've got to get cleaned up. This actually is put in a location that's got a fair amount of shade. It gets the early morning sun and then hottest part of the day, it's actually protected by some shrubs. So what we've got going here, perennials, uh, are also something you can use within your pots. This is coral bells or heuchera is the Latin genus on that. There again, the coleus, that one's kind of staying in check in there. Mizu, 
and that nice succulent is going to get a red flower a little bit later. Asparagus fern or spring rye is an accent plant that's often used in a lot of containers as well. And it's way back in here <laughs> in that landscape setting. So you can see we've also got some flowering annuals that we do plant in the ground. It's mostly containers. Fuchsia. That was actually in that planter, didn't show up very well, but fuchsia is a great plant for kind of filtered light, protected area, neat little bulbous flower, and then they open up into just these brilliant multicolored flowers. We're back to the garage photo again, and now we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do when you've got bigger ceramic planters or heavy planters that you just can't move. We actually use old tree containers, and we call them liners. We bring those into the garage and we pot up our annuals. Just keep the pot from year to year and then you can just drop it in. So in this large ceramic pot on our back deck, we can just drop that planter in. It works out fantastic for those heavier pots. A close up, just a beautiful purple with that outer fringe whitish. Another close up. Here we've got canna. Now canna is a heat loving plant. You can buy in the spring, you can buy rhizomes, which just, you know, basically it's the root structure, but you're going to need a longer growing season and a lot of warmth quickly. These actually were cannas that were purchased from Monrovia Nursery, I believe, and they were brought in from California, probably started two months, maybe even longer before they got to our colder region. But once mid-May hits, we're pretty safe. We get those outside, they probably already had about a foot, and then as that warm weather comes, off those cannas go. Now cannas, we've got this right next to this Serbian spruce here because when wind comes up, those leaves can get just shredded by whipping in the wind. I don't have a picture of it. Or they'll even just get laid down. So we keep the cannas where some place where they've got a little bit of that protection. And then you can dig them up in the fall if you live in a cold area and store them through the winter, plant them back out in the spring. They can also be divided. Here's another heavy, heavy pot. And some of the heavier pottery comes from Vietnam. They just have a thicker pottery. So that's, that's easily pushing, I would say, a 150 pound container. So we just leave it there. There again, we just drop those old tree nursery containers in there. So purple fountain grass, another heat loving grass. Zone nine, I believe, we're zone four. So that freezes out. One of the first things, this is another interesting part about ornamental grasses with that fall seed head, just how you can get that movement in the wind. Same pot, we've got just a different selection of plants, different season where we use another really brilliant color, different petunia, a multicolored one. That's likely a dahlia there. This is in a different location, a place I used to do some deliveries of annual planters. Again, these are Vietnam pots, very heavy, so they've just got liners that are dropped in. But ginger, what an excellent plant for a contrast. It's kind of a variegated greenish yellow. We've got some tuberous begonia. It's a nice filtered light, shade-loving plant, as well as some of that diamond frost in there. So beautiful, beautiful little area there. And this is agapanthus, a little bit of a story to this. We actually got some of these quite cheap one year. I probably wouldn't have done this had we not got the plants for a while. I would say almost for free. A truck full of plant material got stuck at the border between Canada and the U.S. While well, plants deteriorate quickly in a semi-trailer, you might have a week. So the company had to offload those plants pretty quickly. We got them at a discount. I've got a video on this too. I'll flash a card across the top, throw it in the description if you want to watch that. But what those are is actually just the full number five pot container put in that pot. And the agapanthus are going to bloom better if they've got a root restriction. Apparently once you plant them out in the ground, uh, the flowering kind of just peters out and it's done for the season. So we kept them in the pots and a close up of that agapanthus. That brings us back to that original container we started with, that nice setting. We've got a nice little water feature area going back here. Great spot for us to enjoy all the plant materials we love so much. That's all I've got for now. I appreciate you stopping by Garden Hike. We'll see you again next video.